to baptisms. It's time to go back to the basics. The basics of the Bible are listed in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. And listed in the basics are the two baptisms. Yes, you heard that right, two baptisms. But if you were raised in the church house, you most likely only heard of one or the other. Well, let's go back to the basics. Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, plural, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. So everything listed in verses 1 and 2, the Bible refers to the basics. Now there's a lot I could get into, but today I'm getting into what verse 2 talks about. The doctrine of the two baptisms. So there's two baptisms. The first baptism is done in water. And in scripture, water baptism was always done in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of that person's sins. And the second baptism is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not done by water. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is by the members of the church laying hands on the baptized individual after they come up out of the water. And the second baptism then fills them with the Holy Spirit. So a scripture may come to mind if you're rooted and grounded in the Word of God found in Ephesians 4, 6 through 4. That talk about one baptism. Well, let's talk about it in light of what I just said. Ephesians chapter 4, 4 through 6. There is one body, talking about the church, and one spirit, talking about the Spirit of God, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. See, notice now it says there's one baptism, and it's singular. But it's in context of the family of God because it's the second baptism. Like we may turn here later, Matthew, but I'll mention it now. Matthew 28, 19 says, Jesus said, Go into all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or ghost, as it's worded. Well, if you do water baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or ghost, you're doing it wrong because that baptism Jesus talked about in Matthew 28, 19 was talking about the second baptism. When you, ba after, I should say, you baptize them in water, then they come up from the water, representing the grave, and then they're, they've repented. That means they're turning around, they've turned from sin, and now they're going the way of God's law and righteousness. They've literally done a 180 degree turn and now they're going the other way. That's the Bible definition of repentance. And a true conversion is a change of a person's heart. So notice the term one baptism. And this scripture does not contradict about the two baptisms. Because as I was saying, when they come up out of the water, then you lay hands on them and fill them with the Spirit of God. And now the family name is put on them. That's what Jesus was talking about as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The family name is put on an individual when hands are laid on him because Romans chapter 8 verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man or woman have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Listen to how plain the New Living Translation is. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature, you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. So if you've only had the water baptism in the name of Jesus, but you've not been baptized in the Spirit of God, and this is the Bible, this ain't me, it says if God's Spirit isn't in you, you don't belong to him. So if you don't belong to God, then by default, you belong to Satan 
because of Father Adam's sins, the human race legally became the property of Satan the devil. So one baptism to receive the Spirit of God is what Ephesians 4, 4 through 6 is talking about. And it's talking about the second baptism, the uh, laying on of hands. So when baptizing in water, again, in Scripture, it was always done in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as worded in Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, 19 is specifically talking about the second baptism, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, not water. One can be dunked in water all day and still be none of his. The family name is placed upon a new convert receiving the Holy Spirit, not by water baptism. And in Scripture, the order was always water baptism first and then baptism of the Holy Spirit second. The only exception is found in Acts 10. Acts 10 is when the first Gentile convert joined God's church, Cornelius. After Cornelius, the order went back to water baptism first, spirit baptism second. Cornelius was the exception to show the Apostle Peter that God was <clears throat> has now opened the door for Gentiles to join his church. The church had been 100% Jewish about the first 10 years. So now let's go to Galatians chapter 3 and see what that says. Galatians chapter 3, and we'll read verses 27 and 28. Galatians 3, I was in it, there we go. Galatians 3, 27, 28. It says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. One being one church. Uh, and if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. But you're only Christ if his spirit dwells in you. So remember, unless one has the spirit of God, that person does not belong to God. And again, if one does not belong to God, they belong to the devil. Because of what Adam did. Jesus came to do what the first Adam failed to do, to qualify to replace Satan as king of earth and to pay the penalty for sin, but he had a lot to do before he died. See, and religion only teaches you about the final days of his ministry when he died. They don't teach you anything, pretty much, about what he did before. And he, he did a lot. He, he, Jesus came to earth to do a lot more than to die. If he just came here to die... Why didn't God let King Herod kill him when he was a baby? <clears throat> and if he just came here to die, his first message was in his hometown of Nazareth, Galilee. And they were going to throw him off the cliff. If he just came to die and his ministry was just to die, why didn't God let him die there? And just so you know, we are not saved by the death of Christ. Notice Romans chapter 10, or excuse me, chapter 5, verse 10, that we're not saved by the death of Christ. We are reconciled to God, the Father, by the death of Christ. But we are saved through his life or his resurrection because that makes possible our resurrection. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved See, by his life, not his death. So when you come up out of the water, the old person, the old man, as the Bible says, stays in that watery grave. The scripture compares the water, typifies the grave. And when you come up out of the water, you're like Jesus when he was raised from the dead. You're raised now to go God's direction in life. And that's when those in the church lay hands on you to give you the power to enable you to continue to keep God's commands, because it's the love of God shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. That's the love that fulfills the law, 
not carnal human love that's mushy mushy and if you're slacking they'll just let pat you on the back that ain't a real friend and the thing too is it's consistency it's a journey it ain't just a light switch you turn on sunday or any other day of the week it's it, you you have now the mind of a champion of an overcomer it's always on it don't matter whether anyone's looking or not so i made this video specifically for my my friend paris I'm glad he is on the Lord's side, and he uh, he has a, oh man, I, I'm so happy for you, brother. So I made this video just for you. Thank you for watching, and continue to tune in every Friday night. Every Friday night is a new video, because I celebrate the seventh day Sabbath, and you should too, because Sunday is not the seventh day of the week, even if you want to reorganize a calendar. So I'm sure I'll make some more videos on that. So that's all for this video, though, about the two baptisms.